Today I am bringing you a gentle workout that you can do after hysterectomy surgery. I also want you to know about a two week program I have starting October 31st, 2022, all about hysterectomy and prolapse. It's for anyone who has been through those issues or is experiencing symptoms or any questions right now. All the details are below. Let's get started with your workout. Today we are doing a gentle workout that you can do after your hysterectomy surgery. Now this is a workout that I developed when I had my own hysterectomy and major prolapse repair. And I started doing it about three weeks after surgery and it follows the general restrictions most surgeons give. But of course, always check with your own doctor and listen to your body to see how it feels. What you'll need is a light resistance band and either a small Pilates ball or a pillow. All right, so let's start seated and we're gonna start with that resistance band. And I'm gonna talk you through why these motions are important as we go through them. So first, I just want your hands nice and wide on that band. And you can use a towel here to start if you have a towel close by. And I want you to sit up just as tall as you can and you can sit in a chair or even in bed if that's more comfortable to you right now, all right? So nice and tall, arms wide and straight, and you're just gonna inhale to bring both arms up and exhale both arms back down. And then inhale to lift. So our goals here for this workout are going to be one, to help with your breath. Breath is gonna help increase the space in your abdominal cavity again, get your ribs moving, get your lungs moving, and it has a really close connection to the pain that we can feel after surgery. So we wanna work on those nice deep breaths. We're also gonna get some stretching here in our arms and our upper back, because I know myself after having surgery, I had quite a bit of pain in those upper shoulders and upper back. You can get that from the gas they use during surgery. You can get that simply from the posture that we have afterwards. So it's important to really get open into those spaces, all right? Leave your arms up and then gently stretch over to one side and sit back up and then the other. So we're gonna work quite a bit on that breathing, on mobility, on some gentle stretching, and also on some strengthening. We can go ahead and start strengthening those muscles again. It's important to keep moving for digestion, for health, for healing, and then also to make sure that we are teaching our bodies how to move safely again, right? It doesn't make any sense to do nothing for 10 weeks and then suddenly do whatever we want, which is what the doctors tell us sometimes. So my goal is to build that strength in a really specific way, and you can bring your arms down so that you're ready to move once your restrictions are lifted. Okay, we're gonna bring our hands a little closer on that band. So my elbows are right in by my sides, and you're gonna pull your hands apart and then back together. So we're actually working your rotator cuff working kind of the backs of the shoulders and the upper back, <sighs> preparing ourselves for lifting after surgery. So for me, I had my surgery three years ago and you can find a video of me filming this, actually a similar workout to this after my own surgery. So my goal at the time, I had a two-year-old, I had a two-year-old and a six-year-old when I had surgery. And my goal was to be able to lift him. Right when my restrictions came off, I just wanted to lift my babies again. And so I really worked to slowly and safely build the strength in my back, my upper back, my arms, my legs, so that I could do that and still protect my body. Okay, one more. Nice job. Bring the arms out straight. Last one with the band, okay? Arms stay straight and you're gonna pull them apart and back together. Again, think nice deep breaths in here. Hot 
hollow out your abs when the arms separate. So what I mean by that is when you give that big exhale, feel like almost like a funnel straight down into your belly. And that's gonna help as well. The more breath, the more movement you can get, again, the more healing can happen. It helps with our scars. It helps with all of those organs to move in a safe way again. Nice job. And you can rest your arms down. And I know that can be quite a bit of work when we haven't moved for a few weeks, right? Bring both arms up, inhale. Exhale, right arm down, left arm over. And then reach up, left arm down, <clears throat> right arm over. And then back up, both arms up, and you're gonna twist, okay? Twist to your right, my right hand comes behind, my left hand comes to my knee. And again, this is a gentle twist, okay? We're not twisting as far deep as we possibly can, but this is a safe place to be. It helps, again, with that digestion, with organs moving, with our upper back. Inhale up, exhale the other way. And this is all appropriate whether you had laparoscopic surgery or you have an incision, you had an open surgery. And then up and both arms back down. Nice job. So we're gonna lay down on our backs and I want you to bring either that small Pilates ball or pillow with you and you're gonna place it in between your knees. And however you need to get on your back is fine. You're probably at this point rolling to the side, laying down, okay, whatever feels most comfortable to you. So I'm gonna have my feet flat, arms at my side. And then I want you to curl, just gently curl your tailbone towards you. And then you're gonna inhale and take it the opposite way. We're doing what we call pelvic tilt. So you're gonna curl, your low back flattens, your tailbone curls towards you like a rocking horse or like a rocking chair, and then you rock it the opposite way, tail down, back arches. Now these are so important as we start to move and heal. And there are many reasons why this is important. One of which is we get very tight and stuck in that pelvis area especially if you've had symptoms for years leading up to your surgery. So for me, I dealt with severe prolapse symptoms for seven years before my surgery, in addition to endometriosis symptoms for 20 years. So I was very protected and tight in my entire lower abdominal area, my pelvis, everything from pain, from that prolapse. And so teaching our bodies how to feel some freedom of movement and not be so guarded and protected is extremely important. Okay, on this one, if you're ready, you decide how it feels. I want you to curl your tailbone and roll up just a little more. Okay, maybe like a little half bridge and then curl and roll back down. So instead of thinking of this in terms of exercise, meaning like, okay, I'm gonna do 10 repetitions three times, don't think of it that way as much. Think of this as a fluid movement, like a dance, okay? And I know it won't feel that way after surgery, I know that. But I want you to kind of start to feel that flow in your body of doing quite a few reps and you start to think, oh, I feel that loosening up a little bit. All right, I, I feel that it's not super comfortable yet, but yeah, if I do a few more, you know, maybe I can lift a little higher. Maybe it just feels a little more natural of a movement. Okay. And then the ball or the pillow, what it does is it just makes our inner thighs work just a little bit. Nice job. Then you can bring that back to center and you can take the ball out, place it to the side. 
Okay, bring your legs together. What I want you to do now is take the left knee and you're gonna let it fall over to the left, only as much as nothing else moves. And then squeeze it back up. Other side, right knee. And squeeze it back up. These are called bent knee fallouts. We use them in physical therapy quite a bit as just one of the first ways to start to wake up some of those stabilization muscles. Believe it or not, you are working into your core muscles right now. This is where we start. We don't just jump into crunches or planks later on. We start here. We build that awareness. These are very important steps. Don't ever feel like you've taken a step back in your exercise or your strength. That's what surgery does. We have to start and build a foundation again. I've had three major abdominal surgeries at this point in my life, and I'm 44 years old. And after each one, I started on a new starting point. And I don't ever think of it as starting over again because I had the new knowledge in my body and I was, I was just building a foundation safely again, right? Nice job. Reach the left leg out straight and hug that right knee in. Go as slow and gentle as you need, but the key is to give it as much of a squeeze as you can. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. It's good for our joints to squeeze them out. And then hold behind that leg and reach it up and bend. And if this all feels like a good place to start for you. I have a 10 week hysterectomy exercise guide and I'll put the link below. And that is a great place to start as well. And it takes you through 10 weeks of safe exercise so that at the end of those 10 weeks, you're ready to move on to what you want to do. Nice job. And let's switch legs. So squeeze that left knee in. Again, give it a good hug. Don't be afraid to give it a good squeeze. You go slow, let your body respond as needed. And then hold behind the leg, reach it up and bend. One of the main things I tell my clients is to try to get away from the fear of movement. And I know that's hard. We are afraid we're going to make things worse. We're afraid we're going to break something. We're afraid of so many things after these surgeries, especially because we don't have clear guidance sometimes. But you have to get to know your body again. So that doesn't mean go and do anything crazy. Follow your restrictions. Be safe. But don't let fear of movement come into your life because we need to move in order to live. So we have to find a way to get confident with that again. Nice job. Hug both knees in, let your knees be wide, maybe rock it side to side. And then when you're ready, roll onto your left side. Take your time. That's the hardest part sometimes after surgery is just the transitioning from one position to another. So I'm on my side, my hips are stacked, my feet are together, and I'm just gonna lift my top knee up and down. So I'm just working again on kind of that feeling of breathing into my ribs. When I exhale, I'm funneling out through my belly and starting to work the hip muscles a little bit. And again, this is kind of a sneaky core exercise as well. Just waking everything up, all those muscles. Nice job. All right, we're gonna go to the other side. You can just roll to your other side if it's easiest. You can slowly press yourself up and lay down on the other side, whatever works for you. And then when you're ready, set yourself up. And honestly, if you need to do this in bed sometimes, that's okay. 
Any movement is better than no movement. All right, so this whole workout can be done in bed, on the floor, on the couch if you need to. Still in your pajamas is just fine. Nice, last two. Nice job. Slowly press yourself up. Good job. And I'm gonna meet you in standing. So you're gonna find either a chair, a kitchen counter, the wall, a dresser, whatever you need for a little balance, and I'll meet you there. All right, so you're gonna be in standing and you're gonna face your chair, okay? Or face whatever you're using for balance. Have your feet underneath your hips and exhale, raise up onto your toes, and inhale to lower down. So it is important that we start to work in standing because my assumption is you are getting on and off the toilet right now. You are getting in and out of the shower or in and out of the bath. You are walking up and down the stairs. I was driving my kids to school again at three weeks after surgery. So we need to work and strengthen purposefully in those kind of positions to be safe in them, right? As well as helping our circulation. I mean, these kind of things help a lot with circulation, preventing blood clots. Again, staying very healthy after surgery. That is how our body does it, is through movement. Okay, one more. Nice job, still hanging on for balance. You're gonna sit back and down for a little squat, okay? Now it might be more comfortable to separate your feet a little wider. You can step back a little bit. You decide how big or small you want your knee bend to be. And again, if you're thinking, oh, I'm not ready for squats, if you're getting on and off the toilet right now, you're doing a squat. And I want you to feel strong and really safe in that position. So we need to be gently working squats. We're not holding weights. We're just doing the motion of getting on and off a chair, in and out of bed, on and off the toilet, in and out of the car. We'd all be better off if we had this purposeful movement after any kind of illness or surgery. One more. Not to mention it's gonna help with balance. I don't know about you, but my balance always goes off after surgery for a while. Nice job. Just walk in place. <sighs> okay, one more here. I'm gonna to turn to the side so you can see me, but you can still just face your chair. We're gonna take the right leg and lift it out to the side and back in. <sighs> nice job. And it's not a very big motion. It doesn't need to be. Three, two, one. Nice job. Switch sides. Still trying to stand up nice and tall. Three, two, one. Nice job. Walk in place. And I'm going to step away here because I want you to inhale both arms up. Exhale both arms down. One more time. Nice job. Stand still. Bring your right ear to your right shoulder. And left ear to your left shoulder. And that's one more time. Inhale, both arms up. Maybe even look up and exhale back down. And great job. You can do this wherever you are in your recovery. No, you are not alone. It will get better. 
I'm so proud of you for being here and I will see you on your mat soon. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please like, comment, and subscribe to be notified when I have new videos that come out. You can find more, including my exclusive unlimited community with full length workouts, a workout calendar, recipes, and more over at jessicavalantpilates.com. Join our unlimited program. I would love to see you there.